tomorrow it's my birthday i'm turning 32 and i decided to tell you a little bit about myself and how exactly i became a dom i've always had this kinky side of myself which was based on yes like interesting sexual desires which started like really early uh then i wanted to have a dungeon of my own slaves but also that was connected to the revenge point because i was growing in what is called toxic masculinity environment in a dangerous environment and by toxic masculinity i do not mean men who open doors for women i mean men who abuse women who harass women you would just be walking at school or then university and someone can just come and spank your ass and then would run away so these type of situations like when you live in russia as a little girl you learn very quickly that no one wants to see your body autonomy you are like if you are outside you're like man's property i don't know like if it's the same right now but when i was little when i was a teenager there i felt horrible someone could come to me uh, outside in the street and grab my breast and then they would be laughing and i would be ashamed looking around like if no one saw that and now when people like when westerners complain about their issues like in their countries i just look at this like half of my female friends were raped and didn't do anything about it because sometimes like they often think that's their own fault no one would go to the police because there in the police office you would face the same type of man so and also like my personal traumas that started in my childhood seeing like all this abuse all the violence uh it made me who i am it's rooted this deep and strong desire to protect women and also for some kind of revenge for men however this revenge usually is transformed when if it comes to uh dom sub dynamics because when you have a submissive man who is fully submitted to you you it's really hard to hain him like this is a different type of man so yes when people say that do not bring your personal traumas when you are dominant and when you play when you're in the scene i say that you can do this it can work as therapy if you're conscious about it if you know what exactly you're doing because i can see that lots of doms come to fandom driven by revenge this is what we do like and we use it as a as a fetish as a like as a tool even to attract some subs this is what i see like everywhere but of course when you are with a person directly you have to be mindful about what you do so and then during many years i didn't even want to involve with any bdsm community i didn't know much about it but it kind of like always put me off First of all, because I'm not a community person. I don't like groups of people. I'm an individual who is always by myself and I appreciate some other individuals, but I've never found a group of people where I would feel that I belong. There was a period in my life when I considered myself uh, a schizotypal. I thought that I had a schizotypal personality disorder and that was like my desire to find similar people because i felt that i was so strange so uh like i i couldn't adapt among people i felt like that i was too weird and then when i found like the community of other schizotypals i'm like no i don't belong here either like i'm trying to put some standards on myself and this is what i see about like every community as for bdsm community um it was the amount of props that put me off the amount of uh outfits i felt like what are you if you don't have that like i'm more interested in raw type of domination like in some regular circumstances uh when you walk your dog in your sweatpants 
and like this is me this is when i can dominate and i know that you can do both but i'm just telling you how like that was my perception when i was younger of any bdsm communities and so i started doing like pro dom thing two years ago i wanted to combine everything i'm passionate about everything i'm good at and i just wrote down a list of things i'm good at and if i took one separate thing it could be like the whole job for example i used to work as a yoga teacher so i wanted to bring the yoga aspect also I have a linguistic education and I used to work as an English teacher. So I wanted this, everything to be in English. Um, then also I'm into therapy a lot and I wanted to bring this aspect into what I do, like working with people, guiding people, teaching people. And, but since I'm not licensed and I don't think that I'm going to devote some years of my life to studying something just to get a degree, I'm considering this, I'm thinking about it, but I'm not sure if I want to do this like for real because I don't think that I'm going to work as a therapist. I just want this to be a part of what I do. So another thing is that I was a little bit obsessed with going on dates. I used to go on Tinder dates like all the time. That was like a race for me. That was like a hobby for me. And I, I felt like I couldn't stop. And I was thinking, how do I monetize it? And I loved getting stuff from men, like getting gifts from men. But I knew that I'm not a sugar baby type because I don't like when... Uh, so usually, uh, like if you get something from a man, you're supposed to be grateful and he immediately has some power over you. That's why so many women don't want to accept anything from men because this, like lots of them want to get something in response and i mean this is normal this is normal because when you give something to someone you get attached you expect something in return but some men do it in, a, in an extremely obvious way and lots of women don't want to be dependent so i was thinking how do i make it uh so they give me something but they feel like that's a privilege to be a part of my life. And it, that was at the times when I didn't know about Vindom. I didn't know anything about that. So, yeah, like I wrote the list of things and I started thinking, like, how do I combine it? And my purpose was also um, to have zero chance to pretend because always at work, I had to pretend. I don't like social situations. I don't like when I'm not able to be myself and you always have to act a little bit when you are at work you always have to present yourself somehow i wanted to base my business my work on what i am truly so and then when i got into uh fandom and findom like over time like after some months i realized that this is actually what i didn't want to do I wanted to leave myself zero chance to pretend, but when I did sessions with subs, like online sessions, for example, and the, 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 the type of fetishes I dealt with was like, how does it refer to femdom? How is that about me? How is that about pleasure in me? Because lots of men come to femdom, to explore their gay side. They don't care about women. We will talk about this in another video. So, and I was thinking, like, maybe that's not for me if I don't want to see, well, men's anuses, if I don't want to see how they do some gross stuff. And I was thinking to myself, like, so when I have, like, a video call and I see this disgusting stuff, and I thought, I, I got to the point when I have to pretend again, because this is not me, like I don't enjoy this. But fortunately, I have enough of inner freedom to announce what I am and what I want. And nowadays, like I don't, I don't see myself as a fetish provider. I mean, I am in a way, but I can provide only those fetishes I'm into. I have another video 
like what I like. And I just like, if I don't feel like doing something, it can change. Yeah, there are like some fetishes that I can do with mm, subs if I care for them, if I know them, if I like them, and I know that they are into that and they've been participating in um, empowering me and um, giving me all they can, like caring for me so much, wanted to please me so much. And then in this way, I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Because I start caring back. And this is how it works for me. They get my attention. Not I try to attract subs. I mean, I just express what I am. And I know that it attracts men, that they agree with me. But you, like, if you come to me, you have to make sure that you understand that I'm not here to cater for your desires. I'm not going to bark orders like exactly what you want to hear. I'm not into that. So yes, I can viciously drain a man. I can do that if I see that he has no worth. But this is not my priority. My priority is to build a long-term dom-sub relationship where I guide this person, where I mentor them, where I teach them how to be truly submissive to a woman and how to be masculine. Yes, how to be masculine. And kink is a tool. That's just an instrument. That's not the final goal. Sometimes people have very disturbing desires, very threatening fantasies. And I can deal with that if I see that this person comes to me and understands what this fetish stands for, what kind of need it fulfills. Like if a person has some violent desires towards his wife, towards his mom, or whoever, we can work in case we use this as a tool and we dig deeper. But I'm not going to just accommodate every desire you have. I'm not into that. So I keep saying that, yes, I do this for myself, first of all. I put myself first. And if you come to me, this is your task to get my attention, not only by financial sacrifices, but also by what you are and who you are. You have to be conscious, self-aware. You have to have this desire to learn. I am an adult and mature woman who knows what she does, who knows her worth, and who knows where I can lead my subs. That's the difference between you and me, of like your perception of what a dom is. Like I'm not some kind of like pocket dominatrix you can take out your phone, yeah, quickly text, or satisfy your need. No, like I'm a lot of work. But this type of work is productive. This has a purpose to refine you, to define you, to 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 cleanse you to make you better okay that's it for today subscribe to me everywhere on instagram and twitter on loyal fans if you want to send me a gift you can do this through wish tender or crypto so and i will see you soon goodbye